uh, turn with me um, to Amos chapter number 3. Amen. Amos chapter number 3 is where my assignment is coming from today. So again, Amos chapter number 3, and I want to begin reading at verse number 1. That's Amos 3 and 1, and the word of God reads in Amos 3 and 1. Listen to this message that the Lord has spoken against you, O people of Israel and Judah, against the entire family I rescued from Egypt. From among all the families on the earth, I have been intimate with you alone. That is why I must punish you for all of your sins. Can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? Uh, the King James translation said, can two walk together except they be agreed? Amen. Uh, I want to deal with the subject or teach on the subject today, living your life in agreement with God. <clears throat> Again, living your life in agreement with God. Most people don't ever uh, consider this aspect of living a life in agreement with God. So I want to ask you this question this morning. I want to ask you this question. Ask yourself this question. Are you living your life in agreement with God? I need you to just think about this because this is so important. Are you living your life in agreement with God. Because the real reality is most people don't. Most people are not living their lives in agreement with God. Even in most of our churches throughout the world, uh, uh, throughout the world, we have a lack of reverence towards God. Or we have a lack of profound respect for God. And yet we fail to understand the cataclysmic consequences of not living a life in agreement with God. <clears throat> I need you to understand. God calls a good old country boy from a good, a good old country boy named Amos from a good old country town named Tekoa, and he sends him to the northern tribe of Israel to issue an, indict an indictment against all of his people. I need you to understand, he calls this good old country boy named Amos from a good old country town called Decor to issue this indictment against all of his people. The Bible says in Amos 3 and 1, hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. I need you to understand something. Because although Amos is declaring this message and Israel, this message was for Israel and Judah. I want to say this because God calls Amos in a time where the kingdom is divided. So in the northern part, there is Israel. And in the southern part, there is Judah. But God calls him to Israel to go and, and, and proclaim this message to the whole family of Israel. Because I need you to understand something. Because both Israel and Judah were both guilty of wickedness and sin. They were both guilty of some type of wickedness and sin. When I look at the northern kingdom, which is Israel, Israel was guilty of bribery, a cruelty to the poor, a life of promiscuity, hypocrisy, and tempting the godly to sin. So they, they, was, they was guilty of these five Sins, they was guilty of bribery, cruelty to the poor, living a life of promiscuity, hypocrisy, and tempting the godly to sin. On the other hand, Judah was guilty of rejecting the laws of God. And I want you to understand something. Although that is bad, but it, it, it is even worse because this is expected of the world, but it's not expected from the children of God. Why? Because the reason why it's not expected from the children of God is because God made an, an agreement with them. So God made an agreement with Israel. God made an agreement with their, their forefathers, their ancestors. So God had this agreement with them. And on top of that, God revealed himself 
to them, which in itself was very dangerous because this is why it became dangerous. Because the fact that God <coughs> had been intimate with them and had revealed himself to them, it was dangerous because it positioned Israel and Judah for a greater judgment. It positioned them for a greater judgment. And I'm going to tell you the reason why. Uh, anytime you know the, uh, God's will and don't do God's will, then you are setting yourself up for a, a greater judgment. Jesus said in Luke Gospel, chapter number 12, verse number 47, and this is what the, the Lord and Master said, Jesus Christ said, he said in Luke Gospel, chapter 12, verse number 47, and that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or to do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. In other words, he said, for you to know the word of God, for you to know his, re his revealed will, you shall be beaten and don't do it. You shall be beaten with many stripes. See, the problem here with that generation is that they knew. I'm going to tell you something. They knew because of the agreement. They, they knew because of the agreement that their ancestors had made with God. Let's look at the agreement because I want you to understand. It's so important to look at the agreement. And, and this is what uh, aligned them up for a greater judgment because they knew. Let's look at the, the, agreement. the agreement. The agreement is found in Exodus chapter number 19. So if you can, turn with me to Exodus chapter number 19, and I want to begin reading verse number 2, and I'm going to conclude at verse number 8. But Exodus chapter number 19, uh, starting at verse number 2, and this is the, uh, the agreement. I want us to look at the agreement. The agreement is, verse number 2, For they had departed for Rephidim, had, and had come to the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the mountain, and Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and to tell the children of Israel, You, shall, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice, and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So Moses came down and called for the elders of the people and laid before them all these words which the Lord commanded him. Then all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. So Moses brought back the words of the people to the Lord. So I need you to understand something. After the agreement had been established, God says, and by the way, now he established this, this, this agreement with him. And after the agreement is established, he said, by the way, since I revealed myself by my mighty power and since I revealed myself by my mighty acts, I also want you to be holy. So he tells God tells Moses in Leviticus 19 and 2. So he tells him I'm laying this agreement out to you in Exodus chapter number 19. But in Leviticus 19 and 2, I want you to clarify something to them. I want them to be holy because he says in Leviticus 19 and 2, he says, speak to all of the congregation of the children of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy for I, the Lord your God, am holy. So after he clarifies this about establishing this agreement, telling them you to be as I am, to be holy. Then he goes on to take it just a little bit further. He said, I want you to teach it to your generation. See, now this, this, here's where it's, 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 it gets a little bit uh, um, 
uh, uh, interesting because now he says, not only do I want to establish this agreement with you, but I want you to be as I am. But now, but not only do I want you to be as I am, but I want you to pass it down from generation to generation. I want you to teach it to your children and let your children teach it to their children. In other words, I want you to pass down these perpetual commandments and this perpetual agreement down to generation to generation. So God goes on to tell him in Deuteronomy chapter number six. Verse number four, Deuteronomy six and four is when he tells them to pass it down to their children. He said, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. This is what he says in verse number seven. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be a frontlet between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Now, I want you to understand something. Here's the problem that Amos generation had. And our generation is facing right now. The people of God stop living a life in agreement with God. So I need you to understand something. That generation, that Amos generation, stop living a life in agreement with God. The generation that we are currently in right now are corresponded to that generation because right now we are living in a generation. We are living in a society. We are living in a culture that is synonymous to that generation of Amos because we are living in a generation that is no longer, that have stopped living in agreement with God. We have stopped living in a an agreement with God. And, and I want you to understand something, that there are consequences to violating the agreement with God. Just like it was a consequence for Amos generation. There is a consequence for our generation. There are consequences for violating these agreements that when we make these agreements with God. Now I need you to look at this again. Let's look at this again. God established his agreement with them. God revealed himself to them through his mighty works. God expectation of them is to be as he is. God accepts his expects his agreement to be taught and passed down to all generation. Now, I want you to understand something. Now, it seems to me that God is very adamant about his agreement. When you say that yourself, that God is very adamant, he is very serious about his agreement with his people. And I think that most people fail to understand the real nature of a real nature of an agreement. They don't understand. They fail to understand the real nature of, a, of an agreement. An agreement is a formal contract or arrangement, either written or verbal and sometimes enforceable by law. Let me say this again. An agreement is a formal contract or arrangement, either written or verbal, and sometimes enforceable by law. When God made the agreement with Israel as a whole, they were, they were under contract with God. Let me say this again. When they made this agreement as a whole nation, when before they branched out into Judah and before they branched out into Israel, they were under contra, on a, a contract with God. In other words, God gave them a verbal and written contract establishing the terms of the agreement. He gave them a verbal and a written contract establishing it, the, the terms of the agreement. And I want to show you, because in Exodus uh, chapter number 19, that is the verbal agreement. It was the verbal contract. Because let me, I wanna, let, Let's go back and uh, read this again. Exodus 19, verse number 7. I want to show you the verbal agreement. The verbal agreement, the Bible said, is, is, is in Exodus 19, beginning at verse number 7. This is the verbal agreement. The verbal agreement was, so Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before them all these words which the Lord commanded him. Then all the people answered together and said, 
all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. He said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. So Moses went in turn, took this information back to God. Let's look at the latter part of this. He said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. So Moses brought back the words of the people to the Lord. Get this now. He said that Moses, in other words, he, he, he takes the statement to the people of God, and the people respond by telling Moses, whatever the Lord said, we would do it. Which, gave, which constituted a verbal agreement or a verbal contract between the people of God and God himself. So let's look at, the, that's, that's the verbal agreement. But I want to show you that God didn't only issue a verbal agreement with the people of God, but he, he issued a written agreement with the people of God. The written agreement is found in Exodus chapter number 31, and I want to look at verse number 18. Here is the written agreement because God gave them a verbal agreement and God had given the people of God a written agreement. Amen. He gave them a, a, a verbal agreement and a written agreement. Now the, rim, the written agreement is, is, is when God gives them the Ten Commandments and he gives it to Moses and it, it, let's look at Exodus chapter 31 and 18. This is what he said. And when he had made an end of speaking with him, on Mount Sinai. That means God was having a conversation with Moses. When he ended the conversation, this is what he did. He gave Moses two tablets of the testimony, the tablets of stone, watch this now, written by the finger of God. Just what it said. Your Bible said, written by the finger of God. My Bible says it was written by the finger of God. So God gives Moses these two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone, written with the finger of God. So here again, God have given them a verbal agreement and given them a written agreement. And I, please understand that the written and verbal contract or agreement that God made with them was enforceable by the law, by law. So it was, it was enforceable by law. In other words, they were bound to live up to the terms of the agreement. I'm going to say this again. Because God had issued a written agreement and a verbal agreement to Israel, to, to Jacob, to Israel, they were bound to live up to the terms of the agreement. Because when two parties are in agreement, both parties are bound to the terms of the agreement. When you find two parties going into agreement with one another, both parties are uh, bound to the terms of the agreement. If one party, party failed to comply, the other party can take legal action against the violating party. I'm going to say this again. If one party failed to comply, the other party can take legal action against the violating party because there is a, because there is a breach in the agreement and that is why God was sending Amos to Israel and Judah. Uh, both Israel and Judah had breached its agreement with God. In other words, they stopped living their lives in agreement with God, causing God to take legal action against them, my God. When they broke that agreement, when they didn't live up to the terms of the agreement, it put them in violation and they found themselves being in breach. In, 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 in the bre they breached the agreement with God. And it causing God to take legal action against them. That's why he sends Amos to let them know that y'all are in direct violation of the agreement that was established between me and you, you all as a nation. Let's go back to Amos chapter number three, verse number one. And this is what he says, because he's issuing an indictment against the people because they was violating the agreement, which was enforceable by law. So he says here in Amos chapter number three, verse number one, hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, from among all the families on the earth, I have been intimate with you alone. That is why I must punish you for all of your sins. He said, look, out of anybody on the face of the planet, I chose you as a nation 
I chose you to be intimate with, and because I revealed myself unto you, much is given, much is required. See, that, that's the dangerous thing about this relationship with God. Once God began to show you himself, reveal himself unto you, it's, it'll be to your best advantage that you would do right by God and honor the agreement that you and God have. God says, anytime God um, uh, save us by supernatural means, there is an agreement established. Even in the New Testament, there was an agreement established. That not an agreement is in Christ, but there's still an agreement that had been established. God do not do anything unless he's uh, uh, established a contract or an agreement. Listen, I need you to understand. I don't care how much you come to church, and I don't care how much you call yourself a child of God. When you start living your life in wickedness and in sin, you have breached the agreement with God. Let me say this again, because we see this right here in this text. He said, I must punish you. That is why I must punish you for all of your sins. Because he said, look, listen, as you understand, when you start living your life in wickedness and sin, you have breached the agreement with God. Because a life of wickedness and sin, watch this now, violates the agreement. I don't care how long you've been coming to church. I don't care how long you say you've been saved. When you make up in your mind that you want to do what you want to do, live the way you want to live, and start engaging in wickedness and in sin, you are breach, you are you in danger of breaching the agreement between you and God. And it violates the agreement. And I need you to understand something. The reason why it violates the agreement is because God never agrees with wickedness and sin. Let me say this again. He never agrees with wickedness and sin. The Bible says in John Gospel, chapter number nine, verse number 31, and it reads. John Gospel 9 and 31. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears. Why he hears? He because that worshiper or the one that's doing the will of God is in, is in agreement with God. And once you become in agreement with God, God is obligated to live up to his end of the bargain. Even Jesus told the disciples and told the apostles, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, ask what you want and it shall be given unto you. Why? Because as long as you are in agreement with me, I, I, have, I am obligated to live up to my end of the bargain. Even in the, the psalmist said, the psalmist says in Psalm 66 and 18, if I regard, regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. I want you to understand something. It is always God's desire for you and I to abandon all sin and to be holy. I'm going to say this again. The psalmist said, if I regard iniquity in my heart. The Lord would not hear me. The Lord would not hear. Because the reason why God shed his ears, the moment we start engaging in wickedness and, and sin, I'm talking about and, 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 and have insisted upon living our way or living uh, to the dictates of the flesh or just, uh, uh, just doing anything that we want to do, falling into weakness of sin and wickedness and sin. Is the moment that God stopped hearing you and stopped listening to you, he, he, he would ignore you and get to the point where God is start, will start ignoring you. Because it's always God's desire for us to abandon all sin and wickedness and to be holy. See, I want you to say, Israel and Judah was guilty of wickedness and sin. I want to say this, our country and this nation is guilty of wickedness and sin. And God never agrees with wickedness and sin. Listen, the purpose of, in which God was sending Amos to Israel and Judah is because they had an off-balance relationship with God. They had an off-balance off relationship with God. And that's why he tells them in that text 
How can two walk together? How can two go in, in, in the same direction? In other words, we ain't even on the same page. In other words, we have an off-balance relationship because of this sin and this wickedness. Anytime we are in sin and wickedness, our relationship with God become off-balance. It was off-balance with Amos' generation, and I'm telling you right now, it is off-balance in this generation. You are, and, and here's the thing about that generation. They were, they were going to church. They were going to the synagogues. They were going to, uh, to, to, to worship God, but, th- th- but their sins were separating them from God. So I'm here to say this, that you can go to church. You can call yourself a child of God, but the moment that you engage in wickedness and sin is the moment that God, you, you fall out of agreement with God. You violate the agreement with God because God sends Amos and let them people, let the people know, let that generation know that y'all not in, in, in agreement with me. Y'all are not in, in agreement with me because your lives are contrary to mine. You, you're not, in other words, you're not patterning your life out to me. You're not living your life for the glory of me, but you are living your life in a wicked and a sinful way which violates the agreement with God. So he sends Amos. He said, Amos, go. And I want you to to tell my people that I got to punish them because I I, I delivered them out of Egypt. I revealed myself unto them. I showed them my mighty works. I showed them my mighty acts. They, They knew better, and yet they were... They were still living a life that was contrary to God. And this is what's going on with our our nation, our country, and going on with this world, just to take it a little bit broader, because it's not only going on in America. It's going on in Europe. It's going on in the Middle East. It's going on in Africa. It's going on all around the world. We have a world now. That, uh, that, that, that have broken uh, that, that, uh, have broken the laws of God and then in violation against the agreement with God. Israel was guilty of bribery. Israel was guilty of cruelty to the poor. Israel was guilty of living a life of promiscuity. They was living a life of hypocrisy, and they was tempting the God to sin. Wow, that's, what a a, a, a list of wickedness for a nation to have. And, and Judah was just as guilty because they was rejecting the laws of God. I need you to understand something. Now, God dealt with Israel and Judah and Amos' generation. What do you expect he's going to do with our generation that is guilty of all these things and plus some? Look at America. We are guilty of promiscuity where everything, time, every, every, at every point we are breaking the laws of God. And yet we are saying that we are in agreement with God. We're, we're deceiving ourselves. So I'm asking you this question today. Are you living your life in agreement with God? Or are you just deceiving yourself? See, because Israel and Judah thought that they were living their lives in agreement with God. But God sent this man of God to let them know that they wasn't. They wasn't living their lives in agreement with God because of the life that they was living. And this is what's going on even within the body of Christ now. The body of Christ think that it is living in agreement with God, but their lives are contrary to the, 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 the agreement with God. Let me tell you something. There's so much homosexuality going on within the church. There's so much fornication going on within the church. There's so much adultery going on within the body. There are so many people that saying that they are children of God, but they're living a life of promiscuity. They're not being holy. They're giving themselves to people other than their wives and their husbands. And this is a problem in the eyesight of God. And then we're coming to church trying to lift up holy hands and trying to act like we got it going on. We're living these hypocrite lifestyle. Lord, help us. 
And then not only that, then we have some in the body attempting the ones that are trying to do right to sin just like they are. And the Bible said this was the sin of Israel. And now, and not only do we have the sins of Israel, but now we have the sins of Judah too. Because just like Judah was rejecting the laws of God, we have a generation, we have this body of Christ now that are very adamant about rejecting the laws of God. And yet we say that we are living in agreement with God. Something wrong with this church. Something wrong with this. When we live in our lives contrary to the agreement. Because I want to leave this with you as I bring this to a close. We serve a God that once we break the agreement, once we break the contract and don't live up to the terms of the agreement, and we violate this agreement, I'm going to show you in the word. I need you to understand this. That we serve a God that will reciprocate what you reciprocate back unto him. In other words, we serve a God that if you start walking contrary to him, he will start walking contrary to you. So in other words, like this nation that we're living in, this nation abandoned God before God abandoned it. This nation turned its back on God before God turned its back on it. Because that's the type of God that we serve. He, re he will reciprocate what you reciprocate unto him. And I want you to follow me. If you don't believe me, it's written in the word of God. Let's, go, let's look at it in Leviticus chapter number 26. I'm bringing this thing to a close. Leviticus 26 verse number 23 this is what it says. And if you will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. Now keep in mind, now, the punishment is greater. When, you, when God has revealed himself unto you, when you have been studying his word, when you know what is right to do and you do not do it, the punishment is much greater for you, man of God. The punishment is much greater for you, woman of God. The punishment is much greater for you, child of God. When you violate the agreement, when you know what it is to do right, but you choose to do wrong, you choose to operate in wickedness and sin. Are you living your life in agreement with God? And if you are not, I encourage you to repent. Call on the Lord. And start applying the word of God in your life. Because it's time out. For giving God lip service. God don't want this just coming out of your mouth. People of God. But he want it coming out of your life. Be blessed. And be encouraged. In Jesus name.